Jawaharlal Nehru 1889 to 1964 India's first prime minister was popular among the children as Chacha Nehru he was a man of rare sensitivity educated at Harrow and Cambridge University he became a barrister after studying natural science and law and returned to India in 1921 deeply influenced by Mahatma Gandhi he joined Indian politics and soon emerged as the leader of the country's youth however he was not a mere politician He was also a dreamer, idealist, humanist and artist in words as well. His works and autobiography, The Discovery of India, Glimpses of World History and Letters from a Father to His Daughter are remarkable for their rare vigor and beauty. They establish him as a master of English prose. While in prison before independence, he read books, observed nature, dreamt at times, and wrote in his powerful and poetic style about all that he thought and felt. His elegant poetical prose is best captured in his autobiography. The following extract, taken from an autobiography, reveals Nehru's love for nature. It is remarkable how he derives pleasure from watching different animals and gives respect even to the tiniest animals. The piece is a wonderful example of live and let live. For 14 and a half months I lived in my little cell or room in the Dehradun Gaol and I began to feel as if I was almost a part of it. I was familiar with every bit of it. I knew every mark and dent on the whitewashed walls and on the uneven floor and the ceiling with its moth-eaten rafters. In the little yard outside I greeted little tufts of grass and odd bits of stone as old friends. I was not alone in my cell for several colonies of wasps and hornets lived there and many lizards found a home behind the rafters emerging in the evenings in search of prey. If thoughts and emotions leave their traces behind in the physical surroundings the very air of that cell must be thick with them. and they must cling to every object in that little space i had had better cells in other prisons but in dehradun i had one privilege which was very precious to me the gaol proper was a very small one and we were kept in an old lock up outside the gaol walls but within the gaol compound this place was so small that there was no room to walk about in it and so we were allowed morning and evening to go out and walk up and down in front of the gate a distance of about 100 yards we remained in the gaol compound but this coming outside the walls gave us a view of the mountains and the fields and a public road at some distance this was not a special privilege for me it was common for all the a and b class prisoners kept at dehradun within the compound but outside the gaol walls there was another small building called the european lockup This had no enclosing wall and a person inside the cell could have a fine view of the mountains and the life outside. European convicts and others kept here were also allowed to walk in front of Gaol Gate every morning and evening. Only a prisoner who has been confined for long behind high walls can appreciate the extraordinary psychological value of these outside walks and open views. I loved these outings and I did not give them up even during the monsoon when the rain came down for days in torrents and I had to walk in ankle deep of water I would have welcomed the outing in any place but the sight of the towering Himalayas nearby was an added joy which went a long way to removing the weariness of prison It was my good fortune that during the long period when I had no interviews and when for many months I was quite alone I could gaze at these mountains that I loved I could not see the mountains from my cell but my mind was full of them and I was ever conscious of their nearness and a secret intimacy seemed to grow between us Flocks of birds have flown high and away a solitary drift of cloud too has gone wandering on and i sit alone with ching ting peak towering beyond we never grow tired of each other the mountain and i i am afraid i cannot say with the poet li ti i po that i never grew weary even of the mountain but that was a rare experience and as a rule i found great comfort in its proximity its solidity and calm looked down upon me with the wisdom of a million years and mocked at my varying moods and soothed my fevered mind 
Spring was very pleasant in Dehradun and it was a far longer one than in the plains below. The winter had denuded almost all the trees of their leaves and they stood naked and bare. Even four magnificent people trees which stood in front of the Gaol gate much to my surprise dropped nearly all their leaves. Gaunt and cheerless they stood there till the spring air warmed them up again and sent a message of life to their innermost cells. Suddenly there was a stir both in the peoples and the other trees and an air of mystery surrounded them as of secret operations going on behind the scenes and I would be startled to find little bits of green peeping out all over them. It was a gay and cheering sight and then very rapidly the leaves would come out in their millions and glisten in the sunlight and play about in the breeze. How wonderful is the sudden change from bud to leaf.